hello everybody, my name is Greg. Welcome to your weekly Stir Up the Paint virtual event. We do these once a week. Tonight, I will be walking you through Violet Moon. Here's Violet Moon right here, you guys. Cool, cool, yes, yes, cool. All right, some tip, tips and uh, tricks about Violet Moon. So, one is the moon here, we use the bottom of one of our paint cups and you can paint the bottom and you go smack it on there and you get a moon. You can start to circle and it gives you a really nice solid circle. Um, one of the things that I like to do, you're gonna need some Q-tips because when we go to do the reflection here on black, a lot of times when we use our brushes, it gets too heavy. So what we wanna do is we can just take the black and just scrape it down with the Q-tip and you get this nice little bit of reflection instead of it being too heavy. Because black is a really strong, you know, dominant color. Okay, and then we, um, we stipple. So stippling is making little dots with our brush. We stipple. And it's a French impressionist technique. When we stipple, we're called stippleurs. Okay? Gauguin, Pizarro, Cezanne, Monet, Renoir, Van Gogh. They all stipple, you guys. All stipple. So French impressionists. So we'll stipple. And then we're going to stipple a baby blue over the black gives us some really nice, beautiful contrast and highlight and texture, okay? Pressure matters also with the trunks. So you wanna use a smaller brush, we'll go really thin. If you apply a lot of pressure with your brush, you get a really thick, you know, trunk. So you wanna go a little bit thinner, you know, lighter with the brush stroke and get these nice thin lines. And we're gonna do one, two, three, four, and they have like, just little Ys at the top. Uh, they're pretty easy, so. If you guys have any questions at all, you can uh, put any questions in the comment bar and then I'll just talk through it and um, I'll answer in the back as they come in and we are good to go. So we talked about some of the materials, but let's go over <clears throat> the main materials that you guys will need. Oh, you'll hear my, I have antique clocks and they go off like, yeah, every hour. So anyway, all right, again, if I didn't tell you my name is Greg, welcome. All right, brushes. We have a flat tip medium brush, this guy. And this guy's gonna do all the base coat. We're gonna do all the base coat in purple, lavenders. Lavenders and purples, darker purple here, lavender here. So, and when you add white to a color, it gets lighter, and we'll talk about how you mix colors. So we're gonna be mixing all our primary colors. So this brush will be used for that. We have two smaller brushes. We have a small round, this one, and a detail brush. So I'll refer to the small round, I'll go small round, and then detail brush is this guy. And I'll mention them as medium flat tip brush, small round, and detail brush. All right, cool. I have a towel that they're sitting on when I wanna wipe off my, from my paint water and rinse off my brushes, I wipe it off on the towel. This is my paint water. Not to be, um, you know, not to drink out of, right? So mine's like really dirty, I've used it a lot. But some of your paint cups might be like really clean and you might mistake them. So if you leave your brushes in your paint cup and you try to sip out of it, um, you know, the brushes will try to go up your nose and hopefully that will deter you from, from drinking out of your paint cup. I have drunk out of mine. Um, my teeth have been blue at a live event and um, people were laughing at me and yeah, and it tasted really great too, by the way, yeah, delicious. All right, paint. Yes, we have paint. We don't have any yellow, no yellow in this painting, but if you want to do greens and you want yellow, it's perfectly fine to do your own thing, to go rogue. I will teach you techniques and you can apply them your own way. Colors. We have titanium white, we have bright red, Mars black, and phthalo blue. P-H-T-H-A-L-O blue. The weirdest spelling in the world. Those are my four colors, and I'm going to be mixing these together. So anything you add white to gets lighter. White to red would be pink. White to blue would be baby blue. Anything you add white to that you've already mixed will get lighter, okay? So blue and red is our primary thing that we're going to be using tonight. Blue and red is purple. Now, you mix more red than you do blue because blue is a dominant color. So you want to make sure you mix enough red in there. You're going to get a dark purple. So we're gonna go dark purple here, and then we're gonna add some white, add some white. We're not gonna be grabbing more paint. We're just gonna be lightening it up, and then we're gonna go darker down here. So it's a reflection, it's mirroring a reflection, right? 
So you have this mirroring this here, right in here, and then the lighter mirroring the lighter. Okay. All right, so blue and red, we're not really mixing. Um, yeah, baby blue, we have some baby blue, so you know, white and blue we're gonna be mixing together, but nothing really combination-wise that we're gonna be mixing together in this painting. But if you wanted to, let's say you're gonna use yellow, red and yellow would be orange, blue and yellow is green. Um, if you wanted to use some different colors or do a sunset painting instead of, you know, the violet painting, it's totally up to you. Okay, I have mixing plates also because I can't mix on that. There is no room to mix on that, right? So I have mixing plates right here. Voila, I have two. I had two, now they stuck together, and now I only have one. There we go. So I have mixing plates. So I can mix purples and my colors or whatever on these plates. And I will be good to go. You can also mix right onto your canvas too. So you can do purples in here, and then you can mix onto your canvas. You can add whites on here. So you don't necessarily have to mix onto a plate and then put it onto your canvas. A lot of times we, um, we mix right onto our canvas. All right, cool. And another important element for me that I really like that's really relaxing, and you don't have to partake if you don't want to, but this is me. I have my, my glass of wine, and uh, it just helps me to relax, and you know, I get to enjoy you know, doing the event with you and, and having some fun and, and connecting with you guys, and, and the wine is just an additional bonus. Yes, it is an additional bonus. So I want to uh, cheers to you guys. Salud. Um, you know, thank you for, for coming tonight and enjoying this event with me. And I know we're living in a little bit of challenging times right now. And it's really nice to have just to experience a little bit of joy and a little bit of happiness. Get off the planet for a little while and be able to stay present. Painting requires you to be very present. And you don't have a lot of other thoughts kind of traversing through your mind. So it's, it's a nice break for the mind. It stimulates the cerebral cortex and the brain in a different way. And it's really, really healthy mentally for you and physically. It's been proven. So on that note, salud to you beautiful and wonderful people. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That is really good. That is a Saldo. It's the same maker that does Prisoner. I got it at Costco. And it tastes just the same, but it's not as expensive as prison. So that's awesome. Very, very, very good. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, type them in whenever you want. You can type them in now. We are going to start painting. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I've got my medium flat tip brush right here, okay. Now I'm gonna be making purple. Remember what I said, you guys? More red than blue, right? So I can grab a big chunk of blue right? And a big chunk of red. Big chunk of red. And that is, <coughs> excuse me guys, that is a really nice purple. Really nice purple. That is a lot of red in there. A really, really nice purple. So I'm going to start in with that at the top, right? And sometimes I bring the canvas up to the camera too. When I do the base coat, it's not that important. So I'm going to start right up at the top. You can see how dark that is, right? really really purple and really 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 dark and again if some of you have larger canvases like a 16 by 20 just you know tell me to slow down a little bit and i will slow down or you can you know watch the video later if you want it's on the facebook page forever and ever and i also load these up to uh, youtube we have a youtube channel called stir up the paint and our facebook page is also stir up the paint shocker because that's the logo all right so as I go down here and I have this purple, right? What would I do? It's starting to get pretty heavy and light. So I can take a little white and I can go in here with white. Look at that. Look at this really nice lavender color, right? So I can go in with the white and what do I do? I can go in up into that purple and blend it and just mellow it out a little bit so I get this nice blend. See how I'm getting a blend in there? We call that blending. Yes, you're blending into the other colors. So you're not keeping them separate. You're blending into them and I'm blending into them. And again, I'm mixing right onto my canvas, right? Mixing right onto my canvas. So now I've got a little bit of that purple coming down. 
right? Got a little bit of that purple coming down. And I, I do want to keep it a little bit lower because I have the moon here, right? So I do want some darkness right, right in here. I want some darkness in here, some purple, because it's going to make that moon pop just a little bit more. So I want to make sure that I keep that just a little bit darker right in there. And then I can start lightening up as I go. So that's nice and dark. I've got some nice purples at the top, right? Nice purples at the top. And it's starting to lighten up there. You can see where it's starting to lighten up. And I'm going to get even lighter as I go down. So I'm going to add more white. Again, I'm not going back into my color because there's no need. This color is like really, really, really heavy. Right? So I can just add some more white and come down and it'd be even lighter. And again, use both sides of the brush and you can see that it just keeps going and going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Just goes on forever. Right. So, as you can see, keep going, right? Keep going. See how light it's getting? And I'm going to go light, 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 and right about here, right about here, see this line here? I'm going to put some darker purples in. I'm going to put some darker purples in so we get a nice reflection in the water. Get a nice reflection. All right. Are you guys doing good? Yeah? Thumbs up. All right. I'm going to have, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more white. A little bit more white here. Yes, a little bit more. Nice. Nice and light. Now, some of the other color, like, comes off your brush, right? The darker color here comes off your brush. It's okay. Just add a little bit of white to it. It's all right. You want all those different brush strokes and you want all that different color in there. It's really, really, really cool. You want that in there. And now as I start coming down, add a little bit more white in here. And as I start coming down to that line that I made, right? See how light that is? So I've got darker on top darker here where the moon's going to go, and then it starts to get light. It starts to look like sky, right? Okay, cool. Now, right where this line is here, you guys, I'm going to start to go into my other purple. I'm going to go into my other purple that I made here. It's still wet. It's a little darker. I'm going to make some more back because it's kind of, it's a little bit dry. Remember to use plenty of red, plenty of red. Right? Plenty of red. All right, here we go. I'm going to go right down to about here because I have a shoreline that's going to be coming in and I don't need it to be all the way down to the bottom of the painting. But almost three fourths of the way down. And this dark purple, I'm going to need it. I'm going to go right into that light white that I have. Now, see how blocky that is? It's like, it looks weird. It's so blocky. So what would I do to make that lighter and a nicer blend? I would just grab some white. Remember, grab some white like I did before. And just lighten it up a little bit. So you still have that darkness, right? You still have that darkness there, but it's blended, blended, right? And then I can leave a little bit at the bottom that's a little bit darker. So we really have a reflection from top to bottom there. Darker, darker, lighter, all the way in between, right? Cool, all right. Nice soft blend. Make sure all those edges and everything is really blended. Like here in the sky a little bit, it's a little, little choppy in there, but it's okay. I'm okay with it. All right, you guys good? Let me know. You can always put comments in there if you um, want to learn something new or you have a question about what we're doing, just uh, reach out and let me know. Okay, cool.
All right, so that's the basics for the layout of um, the painting as far as the base coat, right? And now we're going to do some other things, but I'm just going to kind of talk and linger on a little bit, let you guys get caught up, because I paint um, super, super fast. So while we're doing that, speaking of super, super fast, I did this oil painting last night. I'm in love with um, Elizabethan characters. And by the way, you guys, I painted stick figures. I, I swear to you, I don't know how to, to tell everyone this. I painted stick figures. I really did. Um, I am not a natural, I feel, not a natural born artist at all. But, you know, I worked at it, and I worked at it, and I worked at it, and I finally got good. I did this oil last night. Let me show you. I really like it. It's, um, it's young Queen Elizabeth. And I worked on her for about two days, and I just feel like she's done. Look at her. Isn't she cool? <laughs> I love her. I love her. To be able to create this kind of stuff that I really love. Look at the face. She's super strong, but she's got like a sweetness and a compassion to her. Look at all the detail on her dress and she's got a ring there on her on her hand. Really really cool. Lots of lace, lots of lace on her uh, on her sleeve. That's young Queen Elizabeth. So I've been working on her for a couple days. But it's so joyful and so wonderful to be able to create the things that I really enjoy in life because a painting like this would cost me a fortune to, to find it in a gallery or whatever, and I can paint it for myself. So you guys don't give up. Keep painting, 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 paint, years and years and years of painting. You're going to get good. You're going to get good at anything that you do. Years and years of constant focus and practice, piano, violin, I don't care what it is. You're going to be good. That's it. All right. Let me put her away. I hope you enjoyed her. She is super cool. She brings me so much joy and happiness. And I really, 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 really love her. All right, so now you're caught up. You're ready to move on to the next phase. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my, my small round, right? So I have a detail brush, right, and my small round. My small round, I'm going to go into black. So I'm going to go into black, and I'm going to make what I call a stippling rolling motion. So I'm going to go into my black, and I'm just going to create a line going across. Just a line going across. And I'm not going to do it halfway. I'm going to go a little bit higher than halfway. So I'm going to go right here. I'm just going to create a line. So now I know where my water begins, right? So I have this line there, right? Now I know where my sky is and where my water begins. I'm going to have this little hillside thing going down here, all right? Once I do that, you guys, then I can go into my black and I can start stippling, okay? Stippling is just making like little dots, right? So I'm making little dots of foliage. So I'm going like this, just going around little dots like this. See? Some are a little bit higher, some are a little bit lower. You want to make sure that they're not pointy and just sticking out by themselves, that you're filling in some space in here, right? Cool. And that's it. I'm just taking like little dots and I'm just going up. Just smashing the brush onto the canvas is really all I'm doing. And then just filling that in. Okay? So I'm going to do that all the way across. I'm going to do that all the way across. And again, like, just make some little points. You know, so some get a little pointier. Really go into that black, though. We want this to be wet because, remember, we're going to pull it down with our Q-tip, right? To get that reflection. So I'm just going to dab. Dabbing, go a little bit higher. But it all looks like foliage. And I'm just dabbing. You want that texture when you dab. See? All right. Dabbing, dabbing. Just doing a little line of a little bit of foliage. 
little bit lower, one goes a little bit higher up here. That's my lovely seagull that hangs out all day and waits for me to feed him. And I admit, I have, in during COVID, been feeding the seagulls, but now they've been fighting and like hurting themselves over the food. So I have to, I have to stop feeding him, sadly. But this one thinks he owns the place. So I'm gonna start charging him rent, I think. And he, anytime a bird flies by, he gives these, he screams. Like he's the master of the place. Like, okay, whatever. Okay, the last part. Now, if this starts to blend in with your purple, just add a little bit more black. Because remember, black is the dominant, dominant color. So I'm just going to add a little bit more black in here, right? I just want to make sure that it's nice and wet because I'm going to pull down with my Q-tip. And I'll show you what that does. It's really, really cool. Really cool because you don't get an oversaturation of reflection this way. If you painted it, it might be a little bit much. I'm going to turn down my ring light here. It's getting a little bright. I'm starting to glow like an angel. And uh, I don't think I'm quite angel status because I wouldn't be on the planet if I were. All right, here we go. So Q-tip, super fun. Here's the Q-tip, right? Like this, take it and you scrape down. And that one's not wet enough, this one is. There we go. Right, nice and light. See where it's little, I don't go too far. Right, where it's little, I don't go too far. See how that's working? Right? You get a nice reflection that way. So just look at your painting and you can see where your foliage is a little bit taller and you're just gonna go further down. And when it's smaller, you're not gonna go as far. Now remember, if it's not quite wet, right? Like this one's a little bit bigger here. I really like this because you can control what's going on. I really like that. You really can control it really nicely and it's, it's just, it's nice nice to be able to control the reflection coming down and we'll put some waves and things in later but otherwise sometimes what happens is it just gets too too heavy too big and you know we just don't want it now if it gets dry like this part over here is very 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 dry so I'm just gonna add a little bit more black so I can pull down some of the color down. This one's a little bit bigger. This one's bigger. So I'm going to go further down. This one's a little bit bigger. These are small. And this one's a little bit bigger. Coming down. Now you have a nice reflection there. Why does my reflection show who I am inside? I love that song from I just watched the movie Mulan the other night on Disney Plus. I'm digging Disney Plus. I don't know. As I get older, I become more of a child. I don't know what's happening. But anyway, why does my reflection show someone else inside? I love that song. You know who sang that originally it was Leia Salonga. She's from the Philippines. Amazing. All right. So you can see how beautifully that worked out using the Q-tip, right? Yes. And again, where I had a little bit of purple going in there. You know, if you feel like you don't have enough black, you can stipple in, you know, a little bit of black, but at least you're controlling what you've done so it's not super, super thick, okay? Super, super thick and super, super heavy. All right, cool. All right, again, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Comment moderation, what does this say? Follower slow discussion, okay. Don't want to restrict it, it's all good. All right, excellent.
So we're gonna wait for that to dry before we stipple in the baby blue. So now what we can do, you guys, is we can go in black and we can stipple in a little bit of our hillside and just fill it in in black. And then we're gonna stipple over it later on. And then we can go back up in here and do some of our highlights and that'll look really, really cool. All right. Small round brush, yes. Okay, black, black, yes. I'm rolling the black, rolling, 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 and down, and then I'm just filling it. That's it. Rolling, 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 and then I'm just filling it all the way to the bottom, okay? All right. Just filling it in. And I'll teach you guys how to do the grass and stuff too. Why does my reflection show? Why am I inside? Alright. Now I covered up some of the purple, but look, remember that dark purple? There it is in the water now. See it? From the sky down there. So you have a little piece of it. Looks really neat. You can really see it here when it's away from the ring light a little bit. You don't have to go super heavy with the paint. Just, just gonna fill it all in. Normally I have music playing, but um, I load these up to YouTube, and because of licensing rules and stuff, um, it's better and not as restricted if, um, if I don't have music, so. The music is me tonight. I'm the music. They can't do anything to me if I'm singing the song, right? Because I'm not the original singer. Let's hope I don't bastardize it too much. Hopefully, Lega Salonga is not angry with me, and she likes my voice. I love you, Lea. All right. Voila! Uh-huh. Cool. See how easy that is? Look how it's coming together, right? We're already getting, like, all this cool stuff. It's working out, and not a surprise at all. You are in good hands. They actually call us, um, people that walk people through a painting, they call us master artists. And I can guarantee you I did not start out as a master artist. I was a master finger painter. I mean, like people sticks and yeah, terrible. Anyway, stick figures. I hope you guys like that queen painting. I really, really love her. She's, um, she's, she's stolen my heart. I really like her a lot. Okay, so let's do some grass. Shall we do a little bit of grass in here? Yes, put a little bit of grass. So we go in with our black. We could just make little brush strokes with our detail brush, our smaller brush, right? So you can do smaller brush strokes at first. I'm gonna do some larger ones too later, right at the edge here. Really, really, really light. And remember to separate, give it a little bit of space separation so everything's not stacked together, right? A little bit of separation. Can you guys see that? that I'm getting a little bit of a glare off it. There we go. Okay. Little bit of a glare off the ring light. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, again, some more, right? And you can do some darker ones in between, so a little thicker. I'm a little bit lighter, but go really, really, really light with the brush. And you can get some really nice small brush strokes. I'm going in a little bit of a diagonal, a little bit of a diagonal toward the right to insinuate that things are blowing a little bit. Yeah, that there's a little bit of wind. So things aren't just straight up and down, right? Things aren't straight. 
Now look at this piece here. Like I can fill in a little bit of black in here, right? So I have some thicker ones and I have some thinner ones. Smaller, smaller, bigger, really, really light with the brush, really, really light, smaller, smaller. I'm gonna grab some more paint. That's our grass. That's our grass. All right. I'm going to keep going here. Keep going. Remember, pressure matters. Go really, really, really light. You can get those nice brush strokes. I'm like going so super, super, super light. Some shorter ones, and then maybe a couple taller ones here. Really, really, really light. Light with the brush. Yes, it is looking like grass and weeds. Okay, you guys are getting the, the point of this, right? Okay, so again, dipped into my black. And it's heavier at the beginning, and then it gets lighter um, as I start to run out of paint. And go a little bit higher. really, really, really light. See that? Now here, they got, where they got like a little bit thicker, I can go in between. I can go in between and fill in in between. It looks a lot nicer. So I did that at the end. And then we have a couple that are stippled at the tip. We have a couple that are stippled at the tip, and I'll show you what that means. We're doing those, those little weeds where they have like a little cone flower at the end. And we'll do a couple, you know, we don't need a ton, but um, we can do like, let's see, one, two, yeah, like three or four, it's kind of fun. Going into my black. I'm gonna switch to my detail brush. It's gonna be a lot better with my smaller brush. My detail, detail brush. Okay. The really tiny one. Same one that we're, we're doing the grass with, right? And I can do a couple like little stipples. I can do a couple little stipples, watch. I could do like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, and like a little point. See that? Like little stipples, just on a couple of them, you know, like if you, like one, two, you know, just to like give it some texture. Makes it really lively and kind of fun. And then we have a place also where we can put a little bit of the baby blue, you know, later on. Little stipples there, right? We have a couple more down here. We have one here, one, two, three. Get smaller toward the top. Just a couple dots at the top. See how that's working? All right, and we have a couple little stipples, just a couple dots on, on the smaller ones down here. But you know, we can do that with the baby blue also later on. We can dab and do some highlights, but you can do like a couple little dots just at the tip to simulate maybe it's like little flowers. I'm just putting like a couple little dots. All right, a couple little dots. Just like simulate maybe like this little flower or something. It's very impressionist, very, very, very light. Okay? 
that's it for that. Cool. All right. Now, take a swig of my wine. As it gets darker, I feel like I get brighter. Look at this watch. All right, that's that's a little better. I think as um, it gets darker, I won't need as much light. This ring light is amazing. It really lights up well. Okay, so I can take my detail brush, rinse it off in, in my paint water. We do get rid of all the black on it. And I can make some baby blue and I can stipple up in here where my foliage is, I can stipple. And you wanna make sure that you're leaving some space in between, that you're not oversaturating. Meaning, see, you can see the black bleeding through and that's what you want. You want that black like bleeding through there. All right. And I'm gonna stipple in front of you guys. Stippling, stippling, we are French impressionist painters. Huh? Blue and white. Baby blue, right? Baby blue, you want this really nice, beautiful, light baby blue color, okay? And then I just take it, very lightly, pressure matters, right? So I take it and I start dabbing a little bit of highlight on some of the foliage. And look how it starts to really pop, really cool. And again, I'm leaving some space in between. I'm just giving it like a little bit of a highlight. See how that works? A little bit of a highlight, a little bit of that moonlight love. Moonlight love. The moonlight tango in the middle of the night. So sensual and beautiful. Huh? Yes. The moonlight is my friend. Some nice highlight. Boom, isn't that cool? Yes. Yes. Cool. All right. That looks really neat. Okay. So, now we've got some highlights of blue, a little bit of light on there, which is really, really cool. I'd like to do some highlights in the water, but I think before I do that, I'm going to do the moon so I know where the light is mostly where the moon is so I can do a little bit more reflection where that is um, and then we'll start putting in all these like little lines oh another thing that's really cool you guys for the lines at the um, at the front these little lines here that simulate the light right up in here. You know what's really fun, you guys? You can use a business card like this, paint a little bit at the edge, and you can get these little, little white lines that are really, really nice. And that way it's not too thick. So I'm gonna do that um, later on. I'm gonna do that over here at the tip. And I can go a little bit bigger when I come down but you should see how nice and fine they are with the business card tip. It's really, really beautiful. It works out really well. So I just added another supply. So we've got Q-tips, we have business cards. There's lots of things that we use as painters. Some people use sponges, um, all kinds of stuff. Their finger, paper towels to blend, all kinds of stuff. All right. So let's do the moon. Now remember, not an oversaturation of color, meaning when I do the moon, I have a little bit of light in it, but I'm leaving it open, the little bit of that purple in there. That's what makes it really cool, is I'm not oversaturating it and putting too much white in there. Too much white makes it look um, not as, uh, you know, not as moonlight, not as authentic, okay? Not as genuine. All right, so I'm gonna take my empty cup here. 
I'm going to take my detail brush, because that works best to get all the edges around. I'm going to rinse it off. I'm going to go into my white. And I'm going to paint my cup. I'm just going to paint the bottom of my cup. Make sure you get all the edges, right? You want to get all the edges in there. And also when you stamp it, when you stamp it on your canvas, you have to make sure that you go like this and then remove it really quick because if you move your hand either way, it'll smudge. So you smack it on and you just move it really fast. And uh, that works out really well. Okay, so let me finish painting this. All right. Want to make sure you get all that edge, you guys. All that edge. Make sure that you know you have enough paint on there. You want to make sure you have enough paint, right? All right. It is beautiful. All right. Now I'm just gonna smack it right on here where that dark purple is. Smack it, and I'm gonna remove it really fast. So I'm just gonna go boom, boom. There we go, and I got my circle in there, okay? I'm gonna be very, very careful with the white. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Q-tip to blend. My Q-tip will save me from oversaturating the painting and getting too much white in one place. So I'm just kind of fixing some of the edges here. So if I added some white in here, like in one spot, like right here, right? If I added a little bit of white, I can take my Q-tip and I can blend it. What happens is the Q-tip will allow me to blend right near the edge, right? But it doesn't get, it runs out of paint, it doesn't get too oversaturated. So it's gonna allow me to get a really nice moon that's not oversaturated in color. And I'm gonna go just over some of those ends that I had before. I'm gonna go over some of those ends, just make it nice. And just blend, just scrape in there and blend. Nice and soft, right? Nice and soft. And you can add a little bit of a highlight, like I can dip in with my Q-tip with the white, and I can add like, you know, just a little bit of highlight where it's just a little bit brighter in one section, and the rest of it isn't so bright. much more moon-like when you know, it's not oversaturated. And again, if you get too much white in there and you don't like it, you can always do this, you guys, watch. Watch this, this is really cool. I have my purple, which is my blue and my red, right? If I added some white to that and got like a, a lavender color, right? Let's say I had too much white in here and I didn't like it. I can always put my purple back in, right? If I wanted to, you know, I'm gonna get rid of that, but I'm just showing you that if I put my purple back in, you know, I can get rid of that white. So you can always put your original color back in to reduce the color you just put on if you don't like it. But again, I'm gonna take my Q-tip, just gonna put a little bit more white in. Now I've got that purple going on. So it's going to blend and be kind of cool. Got that purple in there. So now that edge, nice and soft. Okay. 
So very cool. All right, so you guys get the point that you know you don't want to oversaturate. You definitely want to leave some of that purple in there from the sky, and you have a cool looking moon. Remember, if you have too much oversaturation of color, you can always put your white back in. You put your purple back in and you play with it, the whites and the purples, until you like it, until you feel like it looks cool. Now this moon looks different than this moon, but I like it. I think it looks realistic for me. All right. I'm gonna take my business card, you guys. I'm gonna take my business card and I'm gonna paint it white right on the edge. And I'm gonna put in right where my reflection starts. I'm gonna separate my reflection from my foliage. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna put them right in here so that I have this separation line so you can really see where the reflection is, okay? So I'm gonna just paint this in white with my detail brush. I'm gonna rinse it off. I got a lot of purple on there. And just take the edge in white. I'm just gonna paint it. If you dip it into the white, it just gets a little too heavy. And remember, you guys, smudging matters here too, so, right? So if I take it and I go like this, right in the horizon line, look at that. Look at that, isn't that cool? See that right there? That's neat. Now you have your reflection separated with a little bit of that. And it's really soft, really, really soft. So I'm gonna paint some more. I'm gonna paint some more white on the business card and I'm gonna to continue to do that all the way across. It's a really nice effect, you guys, and gets a really nice result. Now you got this beautiful line going all the way across. And it separates your reflection from the actual foliage. So you know where the water is. And I'm gonna do a couple more of those because they're just really pretty. I'm gonna do a couple more of those. And then I'm gonna get bigger. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger with the highlights as I go down, but it's always nice to start small when it's further away because it gives you a better perspective, meaning that things that are further away are smaller and thinner and things that are closer to you are more vibrant and um, are uh, more rich in color. And they're also a little heavier and a little thicker too. So I can do a couple more of these guys, like one here. Just really, really light. So I've got a little second row of them, right? And now I'm gonna use my brush now. Now I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna make them just a little bit thicker, just a little bit more robust. You can see the highlight. Remember though, pressure matters. So if you go really, really light, you can glide right across and it's really, really cool. And that's the idea, that's what we, that's what we want. Okay. So I'm gonna take my detail brush, this guy here, right? Take my detail brush. I'm gonna go into my white. And I'm gonna wipe off some of it on my plate. I don't want too much color. And I'm going to glide right across this. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of highlight. Just a little bit of highlight. And where the moon is, I'm gonna put in a little bit more. Right where the light of the moon is. Going where you can almost hear me scraping. You can almost hear me scraping across, but see where I got the highlight of the moon in there, right? All right, so now you can see, and I'm missing a little bit of a highlight over here. So I'd like a little bit of light here where the moon is, right, right in here. Right in here. I was missing a little bit. So now you've got some nice light in there. Look at the business card right up on top, the, how thin the, and beautiful those are. And then you have your thicker lines in here. Remember, if you get too much saturation, right, you can always put your 
lighter your lavenders back in and minimize some of the lines if you want. So that's how, that's a way how you can do some of your highlights. But again, pressure really matters with the brush. So you want to go really, really light and scrape across with not a lot of paint. Not a lot of paint on your brush. All right, cool. So now, now we're going to do the trees. We're going to do the trunks of the trees. And we're going to do a little Y formation starting here. There's one, two, three, four, five. So we'll see how far we can get. See how far we can get. I'm going to use the detail brush. I'm going to go in very, very light. So the deal is this. You want to go in smaller, you can always make your trunk bigger. But if you go in really heavy and they're bigger, you may not like them as much. The thing about this painting, and I think that makes it kind of cool, is that those trunks are really thin and delicate, and it makes it look a little more elegant, right? And you can do different trees. You can do different trees if you want. I'm just saying that if you want to get this result, you're going to go in with your black, you're going to go in with your detail brush, and you're going to go really, really, really light. And I'm going to start, I'm going to do a Y formation up here. One, two, three, and I'm going to come all the way down right into the little hillside, okay? All right. Still with my detail brush, right? This guy here, woo, all right. Remember you guys, if you have any comments, mm. that's a really good question. So uh, Marie asked, she said, what happens if you go in with your black and it's too thick and you don't like it and it's black? Well, it is acrylic. The good news is that um, if you wanted to, you could take like a wet paper towel and you could wipe it off, put your lavender back in and you could do it again. That is one way of, of doing it. Um, also, we're doing highlights in that baby blue on the trunk. When we do the highlights of baby blue on the trunk, what happens is it shrinks the trunk a little bit. It makes it look even thinner. So that's another way of thinning out the trunk of your tree. And as, as I come down here, you know, as I go to the base, it can be a little bit thicker, you know, at the base. So I'm going in with my black, wiping off a little bit on my plate. I don't want too, too much. And I'm just gonna make a Y formation, just a, like a little Y, Y here. I'm going to go just below the moon, just do a little Y. And I'm going to come down, straight down, right? And as I get closer to the base, it can be a little bit bigger. Remember, we're going to be adding some baby blue to that, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about it. There's one, right? I'm gonna make another Y right next to it. It has three prongs, the one next to it. And also we can add prongs later on when we stipple in the foliage, we can add prongs. It's a little bit lower than this one. So I'm gonna go one, two, and three. It has three. Just coming down, straight down. A little bit thicker at the bottom. There's two. Right? There's two. And the other three are pretty close to each other. So I'm going to go a little bit closer than I have with these. I'm going to do another Y. And it looks like the Y crosses over in here. So that's okay. Let it cross over into the other one. See how it crossed over? It's okay. They're gonna get close to each other, which is cool, right? I'm gonna go a little bit lower here, do another Y. And then down. And again, thicker at the bottom. 
you know, little Ys at the top, because we're going to be stippling all through here. We're going to be stippling. And where our stipples are going to meet the edge of these Ys. And I've got one more Y here. And that crosses over into this one. And I'm going to come down. Boom. Voila. Okay? So that's how you do that. You can go thicker at the bottom of the base. And then when they're dry, we're going to put some baby blue highlights in. They're going to look really, really cool. So once you do that, you guys, and you have your, your one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect, right? And I could even, I could almost fit another one in there, but I'm not going to. All right. Now, I take my small round. So it's not my detail brush, right? It's my small round. And again, I'm, I'm glow as it gets darker, I'm like glowing and glowing. All right. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to stipple in with black first. The key is here, you guys, is leave some space. Leave some space in between where the purple shows through where the sky shows through. You don't want to oversaturate. Just leave a couple little spaces where uh, the sky shows through. And I can start to stipple right where I started to do my Y. So I can go right into my black, and I'm just gonna stipple right in here, you guys. Look, right where my base is. I'm gonna come right down in here. But look how I'm starting, right where my, my Y's are, right? Now, there's still a lot showing there for me, too much showing there. And I want to cover up a little bit of some of the Y's. So I'm going to just come down a little bit lower on some of them. Just so it looks a little bit more natural. And I'm going to build up from there. And I'm going to continue to stipple all the way up, like at an angle here. I'm going to come all the way to like here. All the way to here. And I'm going to continue stippling. Now remember that I'm just making little dots, but I'm going to leave some room. So it's more saturated at the base. And then as you go up, leave just a couple little spaces where you can see a little bit of the sky bleeding through. Okay. It's going to look really different when we add the highlights also afterwards. It's going to look really, really, really different. Okay, so I'm going to continue to stipple here. Again, leaving a little bit of space of the purple in between and not oversaturating with the black, right? Just a little bit of the purple in there. A little bit of the sky showing through will give you a really nice effect. Make sure you come down low enough, you know, to where those V's are just, you know, barely showing. And you can add, we can add more. I'll show you, I'll show you how you meet other branches up into that after. I'll show you. So I'm still stippling, just leaving a little bit of the sky in there. Right? You can come down a little bit. You really want to simulate a little bit of the tree. So you don't want it to be all like one shape. See how I came down and I did a little bit here, down here, down here, stippled, and then over here, stippled. Just give it a nice shape, right? Look how I left some sky in there, right? I left quite a bit of sky in there. Now what's cool, you guys, is you can add more branches. It's really neat. This part I like because now that it's in, and the, the, uh, the stippling is in, you guys can add 
more branches to meet. So if you wanted one coming down like this, really thin, you know, to meet one like this, you know, you can add more. And that, I really like that. So you can add like another one in here coming down, right? Another one maybe here coming down here. Maybe one crossing. Cool. And then again, if this isn't thick enough right at this part, if you're having like a bunch of branches, you can just thicken a little bit at the top. But see how that looks a lot more alive? And I added just a few more, you know, just a few more there. But again, right at this base, I just thickened this part up a little bit because it's just is a little thin. And it looks a lot livelier. It's very cool. That moon has a nice glow to it too with that white in there. Okay. Cool. That looks pretty neat. And you can, you know, look at your stipples and you can change a little bit. You know, you can do some tinier ones coming down. You know, maybe getting a little closer to the moon. See, I did a little tiny ones here. All right. Awesome. Now, I like to stipple the baby blue on the black when this is wet because I like more of a blend. I don't want it as strong as I have in here with the other foliage. It just ends up looking really cool because you get some of the black bleeding through it and it's really, really nice. And then we're gonna stipple down here. We're gonna put our highlights of baby blue in here on the trunks and it's gonna become alive and be really cool. Let's do the trunks first. Let's do the trunks first, and then we can stipple in the, in the little bit of the leaves and stuff in the trees. My detail brush, right? Okay, cool. My detail brush. I'm gonna make some baby blue, right? So blue and white again. I got some blue and white, yes. It's beautiful. All right, got my detail brush. Now I go in here, yes, you can lean your hand a little bit on your canvas. I go in here, right? And on one side and I go in, and I put a little bit of that baby blue down in here. On one side, the right side, really going in, putting that baby blue, really makes a difference really like becomes alive it's like really amazing the light you can see the baby blue in there but it's really on this side closest to the moon so i'm doing the right side i'm going to get a little bit more baby blue i'm going to finish with this side just the right side so you're leaving some black in there leaving some black in there. And you can put your finger up in here, it's all dry. It's acrylic, it dries really fast. And again on the right side, a little bit more baby blue. Now I got a lot of baby blue on my trunk just now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how you minimize that. So here, <laughs> one of my trunks right here I got a lot of baby blue there. See it? It's like all blue. So I can just take a little bit of black. Take a little bit of black on the left side of it and just fill it in. So I still have a little bit of baby blue in there. Okay, still have a little bit of baby blue in there. The baby blue is cool. Gives it some really pretty light really really nice 
And it also thins out some of your trunks, which is nice. Thins out some of your trunks. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the baby blue into our treetops. And it's gonna be really, really cool. How are you guys doing? You guys, you guys are quiet. It's good. You guys are just painting, painting, painting away, huh? Cool. All right, very good. So, I'm gonna take my my small round and rinse it off. Right, my small round. Rinse it off, and I'm gonna go into my baby blue, and I'm gonna stipple into these trees, and I'm gonna add some light in there. It's gonna be really, really cool. Okay, look, watch. Pressure matters, right? So I'm not going too heavy with the pressure. But now you're starting to really see this pop. Now go around, let that purple still stay in there so you don't cover it all the way up. But look at how pretty that's looking. It really becomes alive when you add the baby blue onto the black. It's like, it's like magic. It's really cool. And suddenly, it really becomes alive. It's alive. It's alive. You guys remember Young Frankenstein? You're probably too young. And I just dated myself. That's okay. I'm comfortable with it. Okay, talk about a difference, huh? Look at that. Huge, huge difference of light. That's what's going to happen down here, too. Isn't that neat? And you can leave a little bit of that black in there. Bam! I'm really liking that. It's really, really cool. You don't have to do too much. Now, remember, if you get too much, what would you do? You can always stipple your black back in, right? You can always stipple your black back in. There's always a way around being able to manipulate your painting so that you, you, know, so that you enjoy it. It's all about your eye and what you enjoy and what you, what you like anyway. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. All right. How about we stipple, let's stipple just a little bit of the foliage, a little bit of the, the tips, and then we'll stipple the rest of it, okay? So we'll take our detail brush, rinse it off, right? Take our detail brush and go into our baby blue, blue, the blue, and white, blanc, Blue. Okay. Stipple in a little bit of some of the baby blue in here, right? So it's dry, so I can just take a little bit, some of the trunks, make little dots. pieces of the grass, some of the dots. Again, leave a little bit of the black in there. You don't want to cover up everything. Right? You guys can see that? Baby blue. And some of the grass. Stipple, stipple. I love the baby blue and the black. It's just such a great combination. I really like it. And also can thin out some of your, your grass too. All right. Beautiful. And now we're going to stipple in little dots of baby blue into the grass. And it's going to be really cool. And we're going to put in lavender also. And we're going to stipple in lavender. So we've got some great contrast colors. Um, we've got the black, which is our contrast, and the highlight colors of baby blue. 
and lavender. And it's gonna really come alive, like the trees did. You've got some lavender in here, right? And baby blue. And it's gonna look really, really cool. And then we're gonna add a couple little stars into the sky. Yes. And then we have to say good night. Yes. It will be over then. It will be over. All right, I'm just gonna pump up the light just a little bit there. All right, cool. So let's stipple the hillside. Let's take our small round, this guy here. Take our small round, right? And let's stipple in some baby blue. And you want to go up into the tree trunks too. You want to go up into the tree trunks also, right? You can go light, you can do like little tiny ones. You want to go right up to the edge of all of that. See how that's working? Cool. Stippling is just amazing. Go right up to the edge. I want to do like where the foliage is first. And then if I go heavier, you know, I get a bigger dot. See how that's working? Cool. All right. So just continue stippling. I'm going to continue to stipple. Right? And I'm gonna leave some space for that lavender that's gonna come in to right in the center here. So I'm gonna leave some space for it. Now remember, when you go heavier, you know, you add a little bit more pressure, you get a bigger, get a bigger stipple. So I have the tinier ones you know, further away, again, giving it perspective in the larger ones towards me. If you want, I can do some more towards you guys. See? Stippling. And I'm going to leave some room in here for the, I want a little bit of a lavender patch. It's going to be really cool. So you guys getting the idea there? See how cool that's looking? Yes. It is very cool. Very beautiful. Okay, and again, larger stipples. Again, I haven't gotten into the paint at all. I'm gonna do larger stipples closer to me. And again, you wanna leave a little bit of the black in there. Larger towards me, see? Very French, very Impressionist. Very, very cool. Let's leave some lavender. This is gonna look really neat. And you can put lavender everywhere, too. So if I mix some blue and red, remember more red, because you really want it purple, and then mix some white in there. Make it really light. Take a little bit more white. You want it really, really, really light. Okay? Make it really, really, really light. And now, I'm gonna stipple in here with the lavender, right in here. Totally different color. And it's gonna be so cool. Just go really, really light with it. And you can go in a couple other places too, like here, here. It's going to look really neat. So now I've got another color in there. I've got some lavender and baby blue. It looks really cool. And it really pops. It's really neat. Remember, if you have oversaturation of color, right, you can always put in your black back in. And I see a couple other spots that are open. I'm just going to put a little lavender 
in a couple of the other spots just to give it a little bit of life. Wow, I'm really, really liking that. Really, really liking that a lot. Let me turn this down a little bit so you guys can see the, the color there. The lavenders and the baby blues. It's looking good, looking good. All right. All right, cool. You can see the ring light like in the, in the window there. Okay. Well, the last part, we're gonna put the stars in, but I'll let you guys get caught up, staple a little bit. I'm gonna pour myself a little bit more wine and then we're gonna do the stars. And then I'm gonna bid you farewell, okay? So keep stippling, keep stippling and enjoy that. Oh, I have another bottle of Saldo, so fortunate, yay. All right, Let's open up the Saldo here. And remember you guys, when you stipple, you know, have fun with the lavender, and if you get too much oversaturation, put some of your black back in. But it's really looking alive and really, really pretty. The highlight of the moon is in here. You've got the darker purple down here. They look similar. It's very interesting. I actually like the one I did tonight better. The stipples in this one are a lot bigger, and I like... <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Yes, we love to stipple. We are French Impressionist painters. I like the stippling here, you guys, that it's a little bit smaller. The stippling in the original that I did, it's, it's much bigger, and I really like a little bit more of um, the delicate stippling in here, right? Just looks, it just looks a little bit more authentic, and I really, really like it. So, all right, so continue to stipple. I'm gonna get another glass of wine, and then we're gonna pop in the stars. And then it's time to say goodnight. But I had a really good time. All right, so continue stippling. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna pop open my, my wine here. And remember you guys, when you stipple, we call you in French Impressionist terms, we call you a stippler. As you're stippling and you're dabbing along and we call you a stippler. All right. By the time I come back, you'll be ready to add a little bit of stars in there. And remember, you guys, pressure matters. So you're going to go really, really, really super light with the pressure. Really super light. And you're just going to do the parts that are really, really dark purple. And then you guys should be good. Right. So I hope you're enjoying the stippling. I hope you're enjoying all the different texture you get with the black. Look at the black in there and then the stippling on top. It really gives you a really beautiful, beautiful texture. Look at that. It's super, super fun. All right. I'm going to take my detail brush, right? I'm going to rinse it off. My little guy heel, right? So my little one. You're going to use just the tip, you guys. Just the tip. Now, some people, if you don't go, if you don't go too hard with your painting, you can use a, a, a toothpick and make like little stars. It's really nice. Um, but you don't want, you know, you don't want to poke a hole in your canvas. So I'm just going to go into my white. I'm going to wipe off a little bit because I don't want to go too heavy, right? So I'm going to go too heavy, and I'm just going to take my hand. I'm going to guide it. I'm going to go really small and really light. Really light, super, super light. See there, right in the darkest parts, the darkest parts of the painting. So I'm gonna come down. Now I, I don't have to go back into my paint, right? I don't have to go back into it. Come down in here. You don't want too many. You want an interesting formation of them, right? I could have a few more in here, maybe one, two, like, you want to come down like at a different angle there. 
We have a little bit of stars in there. Cool. A couple more. You can make one like really bright, like a little bit bigger, and the rest of them smaller. See how I made one? Like you can see one is a little bit brighter. And maybe one down here, a little bit brighter. There you go. Cool. And there you guys have Violet Moon. There it is. All right. It has been lovely having you here with me, you guys. It has been awesome. I have so enjoyed it, and I hope you have too. And I want to wish you a wonderful good night. And, you know, stay productive. Realize that, you know, we're, we're living in, in challenging times. And, you know, we just, we have to keep the faith. We have to do acts of kindness. We have to lift people up. We have to share the love that's in our heart. And we have to ensure that the people that are suffering and not doing as well, that they get a hand of healing from us when we're capable and we allow ourselves to be in a good space to give that joy and energy. We should give it as often as we can, okay? Because acts of kindness and acts of love is why we are here. It's why we are present on planet Earth. That's what I believe. So thank you for stirring it up with us. Let's stir it up. I really enjoyed it, you guys. Salud. I toast to you, and thank you for joining me this evening. Salud. Until we meet again, I will say love and light to all you guys. Until next time.